I'm the 5-Minute Professor, and today's lesson is on our 22nd president, uh, also our, our 24th president, the only man elected to two non-sequential terms. It's the reason that although Barack Obama is our 44th president, he is the 43rd man to be president, because even though Stephen Grover Cleveland was the 22nd and the 24th, he was still just one man, but an interesting man nonetheless. He was a Democrat elected not once but twice to the presidency during a block of time when pretty much only Republicans got elected. Uh, and he had an interesting career before he became president. He was a sheriff of Erie County, uh, which included Buffalo, and while sheriff, he didn't think it was fair to have any of the people that worked for him execute people. So he is actually the only U.S. president who has ever executed prisoners, and he did it twice. He was also the mayor of Buffalo and the governor of New York before becoming U.S. president. And he had two stints as U.S. president. The first time he got elected, it was a, an unusual scenario. He got elected president because the Republicans nominated someone that a lot of people in the party didn't think was a good choice. Not only did they not think he was a good choice, but James Blaine was seen to be a habitual liar and exaggerator and not someone that many members of the party wanted to represent Republicans. So as a result, many Republicans abandoned the party and went and voted for the Democrat that they liked him as a person, even if they didn't agree with his policy. They were called the Mugwumps. Yes, Mugwumps. It, it's a thing. The one blemish on uh, Stephen Grover Cleveland's uh, history is that when he was in Buffalo before he was mayor and before he was governor of New York, he had started making child support payments for a daughter which may have been conceived out of wedlock. Now, the way that Cleveland tells the story, uh, he was a man who was friendly with the woman who conceived, who the child was conceived with, and a number of other men were as well. And in light of the fact that he was the only bachelor in the group, uh, he volunteered to be the father. The child was actually named Oscar Folsom for his business partner, Oscar Folsom Cleveland. Could, could have gone either way. Now, he gets elected president, and then Stephen Grover Cleveland, and again, his given name is Stephen Cleveland. He thought that sounded stupid, so he went with Grover because he was, you know, unfamiliar with Muppets. So Grover Cleveland gets elected, and then just two years later gets married to a beautiful woman who, I'm sure by sheer coincidence, when he was 49 and she was 21, uh, also happened to be the daughter of this same Oscar Folsom. In fact, Cleveland had been the executor of her estate, well, of her father's estate, and technically she was his ward for years. Uh, and when she came to Washington, D.C. to see Stephen, they ended up striking up a, uh, a courtship, and they got married, and he is the second president to get married while in the White House. And uh, they were married for a while. They had five children. The last child was born in 1903 when Grover Cleveland was 66 years old. These are all true stories about Grover Cleveland, our 22nd and 24th president of the United States. Perceptum, Quispium, Damnetium. Learn something, damn it. I'm the 5-Minute Professor, and thank you very much for listening to today's lesson. If you have any comments at all, please put them in the comments section down below. And of course, like it and subscribe to the channel. But most important, 
If you liked it, if you commented, and if you subscribed, tell your friends. Perceptum, quispium, damnitium. Learn something, damn it.